Hello and welcome to the Digital Woodcarver family. My name is Lamey Shaughnessy and in this video I'm going to walk you through the unpacking, assembly and setup of your new digital woodcarver. This way we can get you started off on the right foot so you can begin carving, having fun with your family and friends or put the digital woodcarver to work in your part-time or full-time business. So let's first begin by focusing on unpacking your newly arrived digital woodcarver. Now when you receive your digital woodcarver, it will arrive packed in its shipping state. So the first thing we need to do is remove the packing material. Now some of the tools that you'll need are either a razor knife or a pair of scissors, a crescent wrench or set of wrenches, a screw gun with a Phillips tip or a Phillips screwdriver. To begin disassembling the crate, we want to remove the protective film with a razor knife or a pair of scissors. From there, with a screw gun or screwdriver, we need to remove the top boards of the crate. With the top boards removed, we need to remove one of the end support boards. And with that support board out of the way, go ahead and remove the vacuum cleaner and router box. Now we can remove the second end support board, followed by the two end boards. With the crate disassembled, we're now ready to lay out the parts for the stand. If you ordered the fourth axis add-on with your digital wood carver, within the packing crate you'll have your pivoting router mounting plate, your fourth axis mounting brackets, your fourth axis, and tail stock. Now once you have the packing crate disassembled and all your parts laid out and organized, we can go ahead and focus our attention to the assembly of the base, which is the foundation of your digital wood carver unit. All right, before we begin the assembly of our base, let's go through our parts list. You should have two sets of legs, two upper end rails, two lower end rails, two lower side rails, and two upper side rails. Your associated hardware, which are your nuts, bolts, and washers. And to complete the assembly, all you need are a couple half inch wrenches or a crescent wrench or a combination of the two. To begin the assembly, we're going to work on one end of the table by assembling a leg set. You need a left and a right leg, a lower end rail, and an upper end rail, 10 nuts and bolts, and 2 feet. Begin by attaching the lower end rail to each of the legs using 4 bolts and 4 nuts. Don't over tighten the nuts at this point, just hand tight for now. With the lower end rail connected, we want to go ahead and attach the upper end rail to each of the legs with four bolts and four nuts. When the upper end rail is connected, go ahead and tighten down all eight of the nuts and bolts. And to complete the leg assembly, we want to attach both of the feet. You'll need to repeat these steps for the other leg assembly. And with both leg assemblies complete, we want to connect the lower side rails to one of the leg assemblies using four bolts and four nuts. Now we want to make sure that the lower side rails, that the L shape is facing up because this is the support for the lower shelf of the digital woodcarver stand. Now once you have the lower side rails attached to the leg assembly, go ahead and secure and tighten all four of the nuts and bolts. With the lower side rails attached to the leg assembly, you can go ahead and turn everything upright and the lower side rails will support the leg assembly while you bring the second leg assembly into place. Now with the second leg assembly into place, go ahead and attach the other end of the lower side rails to that leg assembly. Once both side rails are attached to the second leg assembly, go ahead and tighten all four of the nuts and bolts. Now with the lower part of the base assembly complete, we need to attach the two upper side rails to the base assembly. We will attach the two upper side rails using four bolts and four nuts. Now with the base construction complete, we want to just go ahead and make sure that all of the hardware is fully tightened and all the nuts and bolts are tightened and secure. 
All right, so now that we have the stand fully assembled, if you've opted for the wheel and caster set, go ahead and install those now before moving to this next step. We're at the point that we're ready to mount the top of the digital wood carver unit onto the stand. Now the digital wood carver, when it arrives to you, comes fully assembled, so I do recommend two people for this next operation. Before we can remove the digital wood carver top unit from the pallet, we need to remove the packing supports. And for this, all you need is a screw gun with a Phillips tip or a Phillips tip screwdriver. Now, at the top of the digital wood carver unit, you do have two uh, pieces of material. These are not packing material. These will act as your shelf support for the stand. So we'll go ahead and we'll remove those, mount them onto the stand here, and then get the unit mounted on top of the base. All right, as I just mentioned, with a screw gun or a screwdriver, we want to remove the bracing that's securing the digital wood carver to the pallet. And with that bracing removed, we want to go ahead and remove the two shelf boards. And we can go ahead and install those shelf boards onto the stand. All right, due to the weight and for safety, you want to have a helper helping you remove the digital wood cover from the pallet and mounting it on top of the stand. Now, once the unit is on top of the stand, we need to secure it to the stand using the provided foot clamps in your hardware pack. Now, the foot clamps simply wrap around the feet of the digital wood carver, and using two nuts and two bolts per foot clamp, you want to secure the digital wood carver to the stand. Okay, in your hardware pack, you'll be provided with some half inch Phillips head screws. We want to go ahead and secure the shelf to the frame using either a screw gun or a Phillips screwdriver. Once you have the shelf secure, we want to go ahead and place our control box on the shelf about the center of the unit. Your X, Y, and Z axis cables will be secured to the top rail with a zip tie. Carefully cut that zip tie with a pair of scissors or a razor knife. This will release the X, Y, and Z axis cables as well as the router plug-in cable. We want to go ahead now and attach these cables to the front of our control box. Your router cable plug will plug into the outlet on the front of the control box. And your X, Y, and Z access cables will plug into the ports located on the front of the control box. These ports are identified with a label X, Y, and Z axis. And on the end of your cables, you will also have an identifying mark so you know which cable goes into which port. Secure the end of the cables to the control box with a small flathead screwdriver. Your digital wood carver will come with a shop vac for the dust collection system. I want to go ahead and unpack that shop vac. There are some accessories within the box that will not be used with the digital wood carver. Within the dust vacuum tank itself are some of those accessories, such as the wheel and caster sets for the vacuum. If you wish to install the wheel and caster sets, do so now. Remove all of the contents from inside the shop back tank. And on the motor, go ahead and flip it upside down and install the fabric filter that comes with the shop back. With the filter installed, go ahead and place the top back on the unit and secure closed. The hose that comes with the shop vac will plug into the front of the vacuum. And the power cord will plug into the front of the control box. Now the digital wood carver's control box, when a program is run, will automatically turn on and off the router and the vacuum at the same time at the beginning and end of a run. The other end of the shop vac hose will plug into the digital wood carver's vacuum port hose. At this point, 
you can turn the switch to your vacuum to the on position. Your digital woodcarver unit will come with either a Hitachi router box or a plain cardboard box. Within this box, you will find items such as your software installation disk, a copy of your invoice, as well as the controller pendant for the digital woodcarver unit itself. You'll also find a couple of starter bits that we provide you. One would be a 60 degree V bit for all your V cutting. The other would be an eighth inch ball nose bit, which will do a majority of your 3D cuttings. And this will get you started on the right foot. So we'll go ahead and open up the box here. And we want to remove our controller pendant. our software disk and our router bits. Also within the router box you will find your router bit changing tools as well as two collets, a half inch collet and a quarter inch collet. Now the digital woodcarver router itself will work with all three size shank bits, eighth inch, quarter inch and half inch. And for the eighth inch bits we provide you with an eighth inch adapter that fits in your quarter inch collet. And finally, within the box, you will also find a couple of hold down clamps that we provided for you, as well as tools for the fourth axis if you've added the fourth axis as an option to your order. These tools are for the chuck of the fourth axis. Now, the additional items within the box are the router base itself that came with the router originally. This base does not get used with the digital wood carver, so you can leave it in the box and set it aside for now. All right, with our accessories unpacked, let's focus on the controller pendant that comes with the digital woodcarver unit. Now the controller pendant contains the toggle switches that control the X, Y, and Z axis of the unit. And it allow you to manually position the X, Y, and Z axis across the table. The controller pendant connects to the digital woodcarver via parallel port into the control box that's on the lower shelf. It also connects to your laptop or PC via a USB cable. The last cable that comes out of the controller pendant you'll see is the touch plate. This is your touch off tool for your Z axis for setting your Z axis height. And this connects to the table with a simple gator clip to the front leg. Simply plug in the parallel cable to the front of the control box and the matching port. Secure it to the control box. And take your touch off tool cable with the gator clip and clamp it on the front leg of the digital wood carver. This will allow for continuity to run through the touch plate when touching off to your tool or cutter. On the controller box there will be a port for the supplied USB cable. Plug in the matching plug into the control box and the other end of the USB cable into your laptop computer. Well, that completes the initial setup of the digital wood carver unit. I hope these steps have helped you to get started on the right foot. Now, the next steps are to install the software on your laptop or desktop computer, as well as install any additional accessories that you may have included with your order, such as the fourth axis. To watch a video on installing the fourth axis, click here. To watch a video on installing the software onto your laptop or desktop computer, click here. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and once again welcome you to the Digital Woodcarver family. If you have any questions on the setup of the Digital Woodcarver or the operation, you can reach us at sales at digitalwoodcarver.com. And as always, be passionate, have fun, and continue to carve creatively.